Welcome back to another episode of Technology for Independence with Christopher Cooley. Today, Christopher is going to be talking with another tech ambassador that is located in Columbus. So stay tuned. back to another episode of Technology for Independence with Christopher Cooley. Chris, it's always a pleasure talking with you. You bring on so many really good people uh, that talk about different aspects of disabilities. Patrick, I'm happy to be here today talking with uh, Marcy Strader, the oldest tech ambassador here in Ohio. She um, is from Columbus, Ohio, and working really hard to promote Ohio Tech Ambassador Program and helping others learn how to be independent with technology. And today she um, is here, and let's hear from her. Marty, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're an Ohio Tech Ambassador. Hi, my name is Marcy Strader. I am from Franklin County which is Columbus, Ohio. I am on the Franklin County Board of DD. It is my first year, I believe. It's made a year this year that I've been on there. I'm also um, an Ohio Tech Ambassador. I've been Ohio Tech Ambassador since it first started in 2020. And I've enjoyed the experience traveling across the state, zooming across the state, the whole nine yards. (laughs) But it's been very cool. I like to keep it cooking on there, stirring it up. What kind of disability debt you might have? I uh, have hydrocephalus, which is water on the brain. It's like it comes down through my spinal cord, from my head to my spinal cord. And I also have epilepsy seizures that I've had ever since I was born. I've been struggling with it, but I don't let it hold me down. I say I'm strong. I'm a fighter. And once I I came out of my mom's stomach and got all those challenges going, I just said, I just was in there and said, fight. So I've been fighting ever since. Along along with my... uh, tech ambassadors. I'm also a Project Stir State trainer, which I've been doing that since 2011. Uh, That's when I took the training. When I became a trainer, it was in 2012, and I've trained over 125 people across the state of Ohio. And I'm also a Angel Sins ambassador, and I just started on that journey about two months ago. I help uh, do videos and stuff for them, showing me in the community with my Angel Sins. Uh, it's like a little device, and it goes in my, um, I, it's like a little per, a little thing that you can put in your purse along with the button that I can use if I need help or I'm lost or something like that. My angels can, sins can know where where I am and they keep me safe along with my remote support. And so I am a ambassador for them and I show people, if you look on LinkedIn on the Angel Sins page, you'll see my video that I did a couple of weeks ago. I also work for my provider agency, Ohio at Home, which I'm a self-advocate consultant, which is very, very cool. I graduated from Columbus State in 2015, and I'm uh, for the Human Service Assistant Program. And Chris knows what I'm talking about because he went through the training too, except he graduated before me. 
Right. So that's my keeping the cooking flavor part of the story. I got all, if you know, also, if you know about APSI Protector Services, I'm on their board too. And I help design the new o Ohio ISP. What, what is so, that? The Ohio ISP, the Individual Service Plan. Chris knows what I'm talking about. The service plan we get when we talk to our SSAs and they go over our yearly planning and everything like that. It's a little like case manager sitting down with you talking about your goals and your independence and, and what do you want to do in five years? You know, you always hear your mom and dad or somebody saying, what do you want to do in, when you graduate? You know, those kind of things. And you work on those goals and, and they work with you and try to help you. Um, people with multiple disabilities and um, the technology that might be out there to help you live independently. So Marcy, what is the um, STIR training? Okay, Project STIR stands for Steps Towards Independence and Responsibility. We teach other individuals with, with disabilities and their allies that come with them to the training, um, how to speak up for themselves, be Ohio leader, know their rights and responsibilities, and learning how to be an advocate and to help other people when they want to know about STIR or help them out if they need questions about something. So is that only for people with disabilities or is it for other people that just want to learn about? Well, it is for people with disabilities, but their allies could be parents, uh, providers, uh, you know, instructors in their uh, day programs, or if they work, somebody, maybe it could be their supervisor, can take them to the training. Like when I went to the training before I became a state trainer, because I had to audition to get that. But when I took the state training, my supervisor went with me, and then we liked it so much, we uh, prepared for to to um, do the audition and then she became my coach in which the coaches in Project STIR, they help you with your big Project STIR book and the lessons that you have been picked to teach in the training. It's about big, I always say big as a dictionary. So if somebody wants to be part of that program, um, how would they be able to find that information, be able to be connected? OhioOSDA.com. Um, we also, you can also find us on Facebook. We have a page on there. We just had a training last week. Matter of fact, I was one of the trainers, which is really cool. So... With Project STIR, you can get other coaches than the ones you started out with. Like the one I started out with, I don't have her anymore. I have a different coach, and her name is Kara Lloyd, and she has taught me very well on Project STIR, and it's got me trained, and I thank her a lot. You talked a lot about your Facebook portal. Um, what's that do for you, and and what is the company called that actually helps you with that? I receive remote supports, um, and I receive it my remote support company that I am a part of is Ohio at Home slash Med for All because I receive services from their HPC part and their remote support part. And so we are the only ones, I believe, that have the portal in the Facebook page and you can talk one-on-one, face-to-face with the 
remote support provider. Uh, with the Facebook portal, I also get to have my girls' nights and get to talk to friends. Um, if you know about We Thrive Together, we have personal groups on there. And it's just a real good thing. You can listen to Spotify. You can listen to different things. And it's very, and it, you can even go on YouTube. You can go on these cooking things I've seen on there. You can even have Zoom meetings on there. So you were telling me, so you were telling me that it can help you unlock your doors, um, help you, help you um, with cooking, um, and all kinds of different things. Taking your medicine. Um, tell me a little bit about that. How's that work for you? So with the remote support on the portal, and I can talk to remote support on my phone on Messenger too. But I like the portal because it's big. They can unlock my doors or unlock it or say if I forget, I don't do this, but say if I forget to lock my door or unlock it or something like that, um, I can call my remote supports and they could do it for me. And that's one good thing about it. And then I, they can also control my smart thermostat, which I had a thermostat, the regular thermostat in my apartment, and it was too hard to see. My remote support provider and my service coordinator, they took with my waiver dollars, and I got one of those. So with remote supports, it's got to be if the stuff that some of the technology you need, you can use for in your waiver, but it has to be a need. You can't just go say, hey, I want, can I get an iPad? I just want it to want it, you know? So, but it's got to be a need. So I also have a smart door lock because it was hard for me to use my left hand. And so to open the doors and stuff. So I have a smart lock on my door. I downloaded, it's the August lock. I downloaded the app and you can open and lock your door like that. And you don't need a key. I also have the ring doorbell, which I can see who's at my door. And that's been helpful. So like if I don't know the person, I can just, Go ahead and put on my headphones and keep on listening to my music. But if I know the person, I'll open it. And I also have a, a smart smoke detector. And what it does, if there's smoke, it'll tell you where the smoke is coming from. Good technology, huh? You know, it, it's awesome to know that Google and Amazon and Apple is coming out with amazing technology for people with disabilities to be able to use and be able to live independently. Tell us a little bit about your cooking with Marcy. Uh, my Marcy's keeping a cooking cookbook. Okay, I stirred up. I'm going to cook it for you. So I don't got the food, but I want to tell you. Now, I started it when um, I first started with my provider agency. I go to Ohio at home. I was with other agencies and they were bad. They did not teach me how to cook. They, it was just not good. And so when I, I had so many stories that I told my new provider agency about the horrible stories about the staff not being good, sitting on a couch, eating potato chips and things like that. You know how it is with providers, some provider agencies. So I've had some bad ones. I've also had some good ones, but the one that I had before, um, it was bad. So my 
coordinator at my provider agency I go to, Ohio at Home, she was like, won't you make a blog? You have all these stories about providers. Won't you make it into a good one and make and show that how staff, how your new staff can work and, and you see, they see how they're helping you and show them how to be a self-advocate to show them like what to do and stuff like that if they get in that situation. And also I got to uh, show my um, Project STIR, my group of friends. That's how I started it out with talking about how I had fun with my friends and how my providers helped me and with uh, different stuff they helped me with around the house. And then um, that was during the beginning when I started, and that was like five years ago. I used to work at a workshop, and I was a staff there. I was a human service assistant because I got that certification to work there from Columbus State. So I got a job there. But I rode on the vans with the clients because they, the van, the transportation also picked me up. So there was one girl that uh, her staff packed it whatever they wanted for her lunch. So she was like, I didn't want this. They, why did they give me this? I said, did you know that you can cook with your staff and cook what you want for your lunch? Or if you can't cook, you can go in the kitchen and watch them cook and tell them how you want it. And then tell them and speak up for yourself and tell them that and speak up and say, I can do this. This is what I want for my lunch. And so ever since then, I've been cooking on there. I started out with heated up stuff and put it on the stove like the Tyson's frozen. But then I uh, went into a new level and went into raw chicken and start cooking steaks and baked potatoes and just cooking on the stove. Um, I was, uh, started making, I had the chicken, the Tyson's chicken with like the sauce for Chinese food, but then I found a recipe. Well, it was like a, uh, thing I seen in the store of how to make this Chinese food that I found in the store really easy. So I got the packet that I needed that had the chicken and the sauce in it. And I start making Chinese food and making the rice and the lo mein. And I thought that was one of the biggest adventures for me. I also like making Mexican food. I'm a California girl. So us California girls got to have like their Mexican tacos. So right. in their food. So I make that too. And I also like soul food, which is some, Chicken, sweet potatoes, macaroni, collard greens, um, anything you can think of. So food, I make. Tell our audience how they they can follow you um, on YouTube or Facebook, or how can they watch your cooking and your cookbook? Okay, so I don't have a lot of videos yet. I put that for my list for into tech investors that I wanted to do a cookbook uh, like thing like you have like on a cooking show. I just did one with We Thrive Together for one of my tech uh, things that we have on there. And I have my own cooking show and people watch me cook and bake and they want it and they ask me questions. And it was really cool. It was my first time doing that like that. And it's really cool. And I plan on doing more on my blog. So how do we find your blog? So you can go on Facebook. It's called Marcy's Keeping It Cooking. 
cookbook and it's spelled M-A-R-C-I and then an S to it and keeping it cooking cookbook. But you can also find me doing my public speaking and my tech ambassadors presentations on YouTube. What what are a couple of things that you wish individuals, you know, and you've met a lot of people and have had a lot of questions uh, that you wish people would know in regards to individuals with disabilities? What are a couple of things that uh, you, you would hope? Rich, to teaching people with disabilities to speak up for themselves and do it assertively, don't do it aggressive, but speak up for yourself, learn your rights and responsibilities, be Ohio leader, and just speak up for yourself. And another thing is, with remote supports, there's some people, and Chris can probably agree with me on this, there's some people with that don't want remote supports because of the cameras, but with they don't, but what they but some people don't realize it doesn't go in your bedroom. It just goes in your kitchen in your living room. And I think that and then I think that is very, very, very important because people that want their own privacy with remote supports is cool to have it. You can have staff and you can have remote support. And so to to have one of to have both of them is a big combo. If you just want remote support, that's even a better enchilada also. We all mix the flavors together. But having remote supports and teaching other people how to speak up for themselves. And also, if you have a person that can't speak up for themselves, speak up for them because it's going to help them too. I do it a lot and it's really helped that person. And to come back to the Project Star State trainings or go to self advocacy meetings. So do you feel that a lot of individuals that have major disabilities don't speak up for themselves? Um, some people don't and some people do. It depends on the person. If they can't speak up for themselves, they can use technology, the voice projector. They have different things out there if they can't speak up for themselves. Speak up in your ISP meetings because that's going to help you too. And also, another good thing to have in your ISP meetings that I talk to people about is charting the life course. Look that up on YouTube or on their website. And there's things that a portfolio that you can make that is about you. And then you take it to your ISP meeting. I want to thank you very much for coming on and sharing a little bit of uh, wisdom with Chris and I. Um, I really appreciate all the things that you do, I think you are a great example of a high tech ambassador. Thank you.